Today's passage is about uh, the one who is prepared for evangelism. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your grace. And your grace. And as a scattered one, in many forms, but uh, one day you want us to gather together here in this place, and we are thankful for it, this place. And in your perfect plan, in your perfect ability, ability that we believe in it. And please work on us and please fill us with the Holy Spirit. And with my lips, I want to speak about your words. I'm praying for the senior pastor who is doing his missions in the Central and South America. And if there are some people uh, sick or weak, then please heal them today with your words. With your peace and all the church members, we we'll praise you. Please receive our praises and worship, Lord. I pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. It's been a long time to uh, stand here. I am worried about something whenever I stand up here. I actually, it is kind of difficult for me to follow after the, all the 62 strategies. And whenever I come up, and it's my health condition is not actually helping me. So as all the assistant pastors are doing this work really well, so I want them to stand here, but uh, it was the opportunity was given to me, and. I'm really glad to see you again here. And what I want to say today is uh, it's, it's difficult for me to follow after the, the messages, commands, and the methods. And also, whenever I organize the, the PP messages, it's also difficult for me to organize this and try to pick one thing up for the message. So I thought to myself like I had passed and I need to share my story with them. As briefly share my story. And until now I just uh, I was always confirming that um, the grace, the God's sovereignty and my church and I we just to grab hold of the God's covenant slightly, then we face a lot of difficult, um, a lot of changes in my church. An old frame and new frame. It comes to old frame and new frame, and the new frame is a, uh, refers to uh, the gospel, and old frame is my about myself. And the new frame is about the life after salvation. But there are so many words that I need to talk to, talk to you today for, for this church and for you today. I always say that uh, that's God's sovereignty. And I also have a capacity to, like I can deal with the 300 people in this church. If more than 300 people, it's difficult for me to handle. And I, I just pray that God, oh, that's enough for me. Later, I just heard about the gospel, Darakbang movement, and, and they seem to be prepared that all uh, the evangelists were prepared, like 100 people. As far as I know that I uh, had seven or eight hundred people and the pastor Shin told me that we have more than seven or eight hundred people in this church. 
Then later on, I, I didn't have enough time also, actually I didn't have, have enough time to say that about this new frame and the old frame. And we have this campaign about Darabak movement, you need to renew this Darabak movement, but people don't have the minds. They don't have any thought and minds in this. And of Darabak movement, there are so many women. And they are kind of having this one or two Darakbang meetings because they are busy. They cannot do more than two. And they are uh, busy with a lot of house chores and taking care of the family. And we, we said that we need to start Darakbang movement now. And it's a kind of important thing. We just face the Starbucks movement when we have just only 300 people and later 500 people and we changed our frame. And the old frame was like a, um, the ministry before the Starbucks movement and later uh, with fi more than 500 people in Songyeon Church and the Ch Songyeon Church cannot uh, accommodate this more than 500 and they just came to church earlier if they don't come to church earlier then they can they couldn't get in the church so they just got up right uh, early in the morning and they if they are a little bit late then they need to stand outside the church and the elders soon just made a preparation to Kabini to construct a new building. And uh, when I had a mind that I need to build up the new church, then I had uh, uh, thought like we need to gather some money. But after, as soon as we ha uh, ha had a thought that we need to build up the new church, then we just found this land. Uh, it's like a 50 years, it's been 50 years now, and you made this, not me. And, and I, I felt very shameful about this construction. Uh, but when it comes to building up the Songyeon church, then I had no idea about how to construct a building. And I had a uh, um, experience to put the tiles on the wall. It was my first time to do this construction work. And while doing this, then I had a um, thought that I changed my self. And spiritually, in me, I had also used to have the old frame. That's where, um, for me, it's like I was very quick tempered. And, and it's like a, uh, with my wife, it's like we are not getting along well because we have different background and different characteristics. And everyone has its own, um, his or her own characteristics and personalities. And they have different background, of course, they, so that's why they are different. And I'm from Daegu and my wife from Jinju. We have a different taste of in rice and food, and we have different tastes in soups. So we are totally different, and physically and mentally we are different, but we just lived up until now because we just found a new frame. My new frame is, was uh, God's sovereignty. That was uh, my new frame at the time. And the theological schools, we learned a lot of this sovereignty of God. But absolutely, we grab hold of this concept of sovereignty when I received the messages from Yu Gangsu, Pastor Yu Gangsu. And the moment I grab hold of this um, God's sovereignty covenant, then I, we can change ourselves.
spiritual. And the spiritual change in me was like, uh, uh, it's about my character. Um, I have a very, I have so, some sort of depressions. It's about the panics and all the depressions, all sorts of depressions. And of course, there are so many. I think almost all of you have this kind of uh, depressions. It um, it's different, uh, depends on their, how serious it is, but every almost everyone has this kind of sickness. Um, I'm very quick-tempered. I'm very nervous all the time. And I'm, I was kind of picky. And I always tidy up my table and my desk. And before, I just mentioned this. I, need, I used to put the book straight in place, in the right place, and I always organize my books on the shelves, and I could find the books because uh, they are always in the place where it, it, should, it is supposed to be. And um, with these characters, I also was suffering from myself, and I always in, a, in my usual life, I always nervous and very quick, going somewhere. And I, I was very sensitive that I couldn't sleep outside. And I've been to the United States a couple of times, and I could stay there for a month, and I couldn't sleep there. And on the plane, uh, I need to stay there like 15 hours. For 15 hours, I couldn't believe uh, my eyes even a sec. So I couldn't sleep in, on the plane. And I couldn't see anything, and I couldn't eat anything on the plane. And I also had a, used to have the three meals a day, but I also couldn't enjoy the food on the plane. And it was really difficult time for me. And uh, I was always nervous and sensitive about waiting for something. And uh, traveling was really difficult, extremely di difficult for me, because I need to wait a lot. But with God's sovereignty, uh, the moment I started believing in God's sovereignty and a quick temper, being quick tempered disappeared. Because I, um, I realized that God is doing my work. And uh, looking back my past, like uh, when I was uh, late for some appointments, then I, if I have an um, appointment, then we need, uh, I need to prepare earlier than. Uh, and I'm always giving trouble a difficult time to my family members. But with God's sovereignty, I don't come to church uh, that early like uh, I used to I used to do in the past because I believe in God's sovereignty. And in the past, it's like uh, when I started the service and some people uh, uh, sneak into the... the main hall, but they don't... they were kind of... They were worried about being revealed by me because they were sneaked into this room. Um, but they don't have to. They can just, just stand and uh, sit up straight, even though they are late. And God is doing my work. God is doing everything. That's God's sovereignty. Of course, if you are late, then you can say that I can. I just I'm late. I'm sorry. Then that is that's it. That was really blessing that I found this God's sovereignty. And have a peace, like uh, greetings. We ha we usually say have a peace. Then it's peace is really important because I didn't used to have this peace. 
if you are quick tempered and you don't have any peace in your heart, but upon receiving God's sovereignty, then I started enjoying this God's sovereignty. And uh, if you are very competitive, it's, it's, driving, it's driving you crazy. Always you need to beat over others. Then I realized this fact that I need to have this peace and God's sovereignty. And I started greeting with this peaceful heart. And I um, enjoyed this blessing that I tried to share these um, uh, messages with others too. As you know well, um, I've never had this kind of service and uh, messages without this background of God's sovereignty and peace, God's sovereignty, and within God's plan. Until now, we've been doing this and we've been um, examining that God is working with us and working for us. It's not done by our own efforts, it's not done by our abilities, but God is doing this, and God is doing this for this worthy evangelism. Regardless of your abilities and the capacities, if you don't know about this God's sovereignty and with your own efforts you want to do something, then you will, give in, you, uh, you will be giving a lot of troubles to your family and people around you. And think about the, this example. Uh, children come to come home and they try to find mommy first instead of daddy. And if you, when you come to church, then you must find God first. And you must find God's guidance first. God is with us and God is always with us. And when you uh, look at your mom's face, then you have peace and you must believe this, that God is with us all the time, then you must believe this, then you will have true peace in your heart. And don't think about your ability and your capacities and your competitiveness and uh, they are not the matters. But you must think about the backgrounds of God's sovereignty and where does it come from? All this uh, background comes from the prayers. If you don't pray, then you start having this laziness and corruption. And you, you're talking about these prayers in 24 hours a day, and you, with this, then you can um, have this background of God's sovereignty. And you can stay and you can live within the prayers. It's not that difficult for you to stay within this prayers, these prayers, and while you are studying, and you are working, and while you are traveling, then you can stay within the prayers. And still, it is difficult for me to pray and breathe at the same time, but of course it is, uh, it should be done, but uh, still for me it's kind of difficult. And it's naturally coming out that God is uh, handling my life and, and I have a peace whenever I meet people. And within this peace and wherever you go and whatever you do, then you will experience the God's kingdom, which is very important in your life. God's kingdom uh, established in your life, then uh, we don't have anything to say about this. And it's not a matter of the success in the world, because God is always with us 25, 24 hours a day. And we have no choice but to try Him in our life, because God is with us. And we will start enjoying this uh, deep peace flowing into your heart and into your life. And it's so precious that even people before death, they can enjoy this peace. And I said that to, I said to uh, my son that even you face difficulties and you must enjoy this. If if you are sad, and you must be thankful for this because you believe in God's sovereignty. And whether you are sad, whether you are 
in pain, God promised that all the triumph in your life under any circumstances. And it's very moment you must grab hold of this that God is not calling this uh, prominent or the people with ability. God has his, his own timetable. And I also, uh, I was away from the church for about a month. Then I stayed there. Even there was no problem with my children and with my with my church. Of course, the children must be taken care of by their parents, but within prayers, it's about not the um, the love done by the parents or people, but done by the the prayers for the next genera generations and. Uh, don't don't be worried about your children's bad grades. It's okay to for them to have good grades or bad grades, and it might, um, then children might be very glad to hear this. But they are as long as they are staying with the God's sovereignty, then it doesn't really matter if it's working well or not. And with, according to God's time schedule, uh, there were very few people um, in America, so I didn't travel a lot. But in Korea, from Seoul to Yeosu, I traveled a lot um, every week. But He didn't give me that uh, special blessings because I traveled and worked a lot. But while doing so, and one day, I, uh, I found um, that I had uh, some problems, serious problems with my heart. I was staying in a hotel, and I felt uneasy, and, and uh, um, I just sensed that, that there was something wrong with my heart. And then since then, I've, start, I've had a serious problems in my health. But nowadays, it's getting much better than before. And I'm getting younger and younger as time goes by. And so I'm going to be a child someday. Then. And I traveled, I um, visited so many places, but at one point, I just knocked down. And some, some um, uh, bad thoughts come, bad thoughts come after me, and like, uh, I can do this. And uh, I should I could have died without this thought, without this God's sovereignty. And I just fell down completely. And I said to God that like, I did a lot of things, I did everything, but please take my life. And because all the pains in my body was so painful. And my ability is just up to this. And I'm giving a lot of troubles to my family members, and uh, please take my life here now. Then it was I was really boastful about my life. Then God, it was God's plan and God's sovereignty that that God is doing this, not me. And God is not pleased with what when you are worried about something, cause that's not yours. If you are worried about your children and God is not pleased with this, and they are always nervous to grab hold of these all the worries and problems, but as a child of God, uh, children were given to you temporarily while living on this earth. And um, these children were, were presented to to us and given to us and uh, 
uh, I will give this story that I uh, I had a son and he was about to die at the time then I said that if you have no reason to live on this earth then please you need to ask God to take your life and but um, as, as a parent it shouldn't be said like this as a parent you shouldn't say that to your children but I, uh, I was believing God's sovereignty uh, my son was given to me and it's uh, temporarily I was taking care of my son so if God takes his life, then let him do this. Then uh, well, well, as a conference, then I was about to give the benediction. And, and I was, one day I said to um, the audience, and the audience were, the, uh, was looking at me like a, some lot of wonders, but But he is he's okay now and is still alive and he is studying abroad until now in the uh, in the states. And God is doing this. God is taking care of my son's life. And it's not my and all the backgrounds are from God. God is accomplishing this. And when you are when I started my uh, missions in in church, and I I had my lips swollen, a lot of sores because of worries about uh, church members, and I realized that I don't need to worry about the churches. And whenever I take a phone call late at night, then I was really worried about something because it always uh, bad news are coming late at night good news are coming early in the morning so until now it is kind of imprinted in my heart that, that whenever I got a phone call late at night still I don't feel that good don't call me late at night and you must call please call me in the morning or during the day and whether it is early or more um, or late that's within God's sovereignty if you know the fact early or late, it doesn't really matter. God is with us. God is always doing his work with us. And this message was, I just grabbed hold of this message slightly and I'm still here. I could be going to the, the heaven and I, when I see the young people going to heaven then I, I thought to myself like uh, I need to uh, be taken by God instead of the young people but and I, I um, said to my wife then and he, she said that you have special reason to live here she is always saying this you have a special reason to live here you must stay here for your children and for the next generations. He just made up this sentence, but um, it's God's, within God's sovereignty whether you go to heaven early or late. And a, spun, uh, a female deacon um, had a really great meal and he slept and he went to heaven the next day. And I thought, that it was really peaceful um, experience that he went to heaven over an uh, over a night, and the fact that you are going to have the last breath, breath and it's really it must be very painful. But it's also within God's uh, sovereignty whether God takes your life right away or you need to endure some sort of pains. Then it's 
you you just pray whether you are doing some um, work missions for the evangelism or not that's God's sovereignty to save the nations of people and if people are not doing these missions and still they are the same still if you are doing this it or not still we are saving 237 nations and you do not that's therefore do not be boastful about what you are doing now and and don't, don't be discouraged with the disturbing movement because it's not working well when, uh, when they view grab hold of this God's sovereignty, then God will do this. God will take over this. And at this very moment, I want to confirm this again that when you are weak and when you are not strong, God is still the same and God is with you more than before. Like before, he confessed that I'm weak. Even when I'm weak, I'm strong. And Eliza, he was about to uh, ask God to take his life, and 40 days he went to, for, after 40 days he arrived at the mountain of Horeb, and he found himself stronger before, and about, uh, think about the Moses, when he was about to give it up, and he uh, gained strength from the Lord. And my wife said that you said, uh, you are always saying that you uh, you can do this, and I said this. Okay, it's not working for me, so that's why I I said that I can do this. I cannot drive for more than two hours. If I go to mountains, then I can um, drive kind of longer, but I can do this. But the more you grab hold of this class sovereignty. And I changed my mind to like uh, when I was was about to think that I I can do this, but I changed my mind like oh uh, it's not my my thought uh, it's not to, uh, done by my thoughts. God, if God says yes, then it can be done for me. Of course, there are the things that we can't do this that can be changed and they can be done by God until. You finish your life here, you must be bold, and you must stay within God's sovereignty. Under any kind of circumstances, you can revolve up the covenant, and you can change your life according to God's will. And, and I changed my characteristics. It's like uh, I'm not so sure about the how how gentle I am, but I um, less picky. And nowadays, I just mess around and I try to. Uh, I don't hide my desk nowadays. I, I put things everywhere, and my my wife is that my wife started nagging me like, uh, you need to tie up your table, your desk. So I just uh, change it up to this under God's sovereignty, then if you slightly grab hold of God's covenant, you will change yourself. You always think that you are comparing yourself with others and you say well, only think that you can do this and it's not working for me. Don't say this because God is um, with you and God is doing work for you. And there are some people, very good looking, there are some people kind of um, average looking. And uh, you can find some couples with good looking guy, with a uh, kind of um, average looking girl. Um, and the good uh, God is doing this work. And if, if there is a um, ugly man, then um, the handsome man can stand out. And vice versa. And even identical twins, they are different. And if you are between you, there's no, not the same. There's nothing same, the same. And they are, they look so different. And they look, they look different. And, and they are different. And God is making this. 
and even we are trying to make something the same, but still they are different. So God is guiding us to His authority and absolute authority and God's guidance. And God is guiding us to this and this evangelism. God is preparing and God is doing his evangelism for the one who is prepared for this evangelism and if you are saying this I, I can do this then you must change your mind God is doing this if God does this then um, if you are stopped by God you can just stay if you if God lets you go then you can go because it's done by God and I'm just uh, by saying this, I would try to uh, make a conclusion. I can do anything through whom who strengthens me. And you, uh, it was not working because uh, you want to do something with your own effort, but you must believe in God's existence. And that is your identity. The God's sovereignty is your identity. God doesn't say anything about you can do this or you can't. God, if God says yes, then don't say anything about other, other excuses. That, that so you are so boastful about um, judging something that you can or you can't. You must cast all things, your judgments in, onto God. You must put everything, every thought, every uh, your life, your entire life onto God, and God will do this, and God is doing, working for you. If, if you want to do something that is sit done by your own thoughts, God is doing this, and you must grab hold. Lastly, you must grab hold of this. God is blessing your life with His God's sovereignty, within which you must stay here. Oh, Father God, thank you for your authority and your sovereignty. I want to be believing your life and your God's sovereignty and your guidance. I want to be pleased with and filled with your, um, your words. I pray in Jesus' holy, wonderful name. Amen.